Yes, the appropriate steps were taken. People with immediate contact are working from home. So if you remember on Thursday, I, I think at that point I told you we had one confirmed active duty. So we now have three confirmed active duty. There's the active duty member in Korea, the one that was mentioned previously here in the United States, and then there's one in Europe also who have been diagnosed with coronavirus. In addition, we have one civil servant who's been diagnosed with coronavirus, four dependents, and one contractor, all at various locations. All are doing well at this point based on the clinical updates that we've received from them uh, or from the locations where they're being treated. Uh, we have six people who are currently being evaluated, and I'm going to use that term because there's a bunch of very specific terms, but there's six people currently being evaluated that we're tracking, uh, and we'll wait to see what their test results are when they come back. As far as how many tests we've conducted, uh, last report that I saw yesterday was 143 within DOD labs. That does not include tests that were done in other labs on DOD personnel, so I can't we don't have any way of tracking if a lab for a DOD person was sent out to another lab. We have 13 labs that are up and running within DOD that are performing these tests right now, and they've got ample supplies. I'm getting a daily update on where they are with that, and all of them report that they have what they need. Yeah, and I'm wondering, uh, is it Secretary, what is Secretary Esper's view on what... I think that it is likely given what we're seeing around the world and the fact that we have people all over the world, that there are more than nine people affiliated with the Department of Defense. Whether it's 10 or 21, I, that I would be guessing at this point. But uh, yes, I think that it is likely that the number is higher. The good news is, as I've shared uh, before, and as you know, we've reported is, the impact on younger people and healthy people is often a mild cold or, you know, or flu-like uh, illness. And so that's one of the challenges, and that's why I think it's likely higher. You know, this is the flu season. So people have the flu, they say oh, it's the regular flu. Could have also been coronavirus, and they got better and they went about their, their business. Until, um, until we have more data on this, it'll be difficult to specifically answer your question. But I think we're getting much better data over time. And it is a case by case. And I think the important point the Department of Defense has had plans for dealing with infectious disease outbreaks like this for years. Every base has their own plan and exercises them. So each base has a plan for how they're going to handle that. It's coordinated with their local authorities going forward. I can't overstate the importance of the local authorities. If we go back to any successful response, it starts with a strong local public health authority and good plans that are not unique to one employer like the DOD, but to the whole community. Even more important than that, though, is the individual responsibility. And I'll, I'll foot stomp that because each individual, and we've clearly expressed that to our staff, each individual has the responsibility to say, I'm feeling sick, therefore I'm not going to come into work. I think I've been exposed to someone who traveled to China or to Italy or to a high-risk area, therefore I'm going to come in and be evaluated. And if they're considered to be at risk, then their family should also quarantine. That is the right way to do it. Yeah. But on the vaccine development is likely going to be the longest. That typically takes months and sometimes years to develop an, a safe and effective vaccine. The medical countermeasures right now, we're trying a variety of medications and testing them in different scenarios. So we hope that we will have some medical countermeasures available sooner than the vaccines may be available.